Welcome back, friends. In this chapter, Lu Sheng is initially anxious about the damage he caused during the entrance ceremony but is surprised to receive a lavish reward of 1,000 points. Despite this, he chooses to spend a month sleeping in his dorm, shocking everyone and causing them to lose hope in him. Meanwhile, the other three geniuses train diligently and surpass Lu Sheng, while Cao Yang seeks to avenge his loss by defeating Lu Sheng, Xia Lin gets ready to kill him and surpass all her fears. If you've missed any previous chapters, the link is in the description below. Be sure to catch up. Alright folks, let's set our sights high today, our goal is 600 likes. Hit that like button and subscribe right now. Lu Sheng was escorted to the command center to meet the chief instructor. He felt anxious, imagining the high costs of the state-of-the-art machinery he had destroyed. However, Chief Instructor Dong Quangshu appeared unfazed. She clarified that each of the 18 machines he broke were worth millions and were beyond repair, amounting to half the yearly budget of the facility. Despite this, they decided that Lu Sheng would not be held responsible for any damages or for the unconscious examiner. Then, Deputy Chief Instructor Major Qin Xiaojin entered with the three talented individuals Yang Yuan had mentioned, all of whom had passed the entrance exam. The first one was Cao Yang from Yonglin City, a second-level warrior with a unique ability of stone skin, enhancing his defense significantly. Next was Meng Jinha from Donggong City, also a second-level warrior known for his exceptional speed. The third individual was Xia Lin, the only psychic genius of that year, who trembled upon seeing Lu Sheng in the room. Breaking the silence, the chief instructor explained that they were free to follow their own training routines without interference. The staff were there to support them, and they could utilize the facility and its amenities as they saw fit. Simply put, they could even sleep in the dormitory all day if they wanted to. Lu Sheng's expression turned a bit odd as if it was directed towards him. Additionally, they had to earn points to stay at the facility. Everything, from meals to toilet paper, was paid for with points earned. If they couldn't afford it, they'd have to leave. Since only four people passed the assessment, Dong Quangshu handed them their reward cards. This thrilled everyone, as it meant they could focus on training instead of worrying about survival. However, they noticed that while they had gold cards with 100 points each, Lu Sheng had a white card, leading them to believe it was empty. On the back of the cards were the costs for basic amenities. For example, a chunk of monster meat cost 5 points, while access to the training room cost 10 points. Instruction from a regular teacher was 30 points, and instruction from Dong Quangshu herself was 100 points. Lu Sheng only needed monster meat since he would spend most of his time in the dream world. He shocked everyone by stating that all he needed was the meal ration, as everything else was useless to him. This was true, as there was nothing Dong Quangshu could teach him, given his extensive knowledge database from the future. At that moment, the deputy chief instructor revealed that Lu Sheng's card held 1,000 points. Cao Yang couldn't accept that Dong Quangshu was favoring Lu Sheng. He felt disappointed, believing that the training center should support all talented individuals equally. The other two were terrified, reminding Cao Yang of how Lu Sheng had defeated 18 level 2 machines and a level 3 trainer. Despite their fears, Cao Yang dismissed their concerns as rumors. He wanted to test Lu Sheng himself, eager to showcase his stone-like skin and challenge Lu Sheng to attack him with full force. Cao Yang believed he could handle a physical attack easily with his defensive body type and was confident he could claim Lu Sheng's 1000 point card once he defeated him. Qin Xiaojin attempted to caution Cao Yang against provoking Lu Sheng, but Dong Quangshu intervened, eager to witness Lu Sheng's abilities firsthand. Cao Yang, in a taunting manner, challenged Lu Sheng to unleash his full strength while bolstering his own defenses with his stone-like skin. However, Lu Sheng was already disinterested in the confrontation. With a mere flick, he sent Cao Yang flying several meters into the wall, causing considerable damage to the heavily reinforced concrete. Concerned about the repercussions of the damaged wall, Lu Sheng worried he might be held responsible. Both Qin Xiaojin and Dong Quangshu were disappointed by Cao Yang's lack of strength, as they had not anticipated him to be so weak. Meng Jinha and Xia Lin were both shocked and scared of Lu Sheng. With the commotion settled, Lu Sheng requested to leave. However, Dong Quangshu was intrigued to know about his routine and future plans, especially since he held a 1000 point card and could receive 10 lessons from her for it. But Lu Sheng showed no interest in taking lessons. Qin Xiaojin was curious about what could be more important than receiving guidance from the camp's commanding officers. Lu Sheng calmly stated that he was going to bed and preferred not to be disturbed, shocking both Meng Jinha and Xia Lin. Qin Xiaojin couldn't believe what he was hearing and chuckled, recalling his earlier comment about sleeping all day if you have enough points. Dong Quangshu, however, felt disappointed. Lu Sheng retired to his private dorm room to sleep, which concerned Dong Quangshu as she didn't want to see talent go to waste. Reflecting on their time at the training camp, they recalled Xiang Peng, a physically gifted student who dominated over 20 talented warriors that year and earned the title of king. 
however, they also remember that physical prowess alone wouldn't guarantee success in the long run. Skills like observation, judgment, tactics, strategy, and experience were equally important. They realized that Lu Sheng's future might follow a similar path. Lu Sheng found himself in a fierce battle with a dominating zombie, struggling to gain the upper hand. Realizing he needed to act fast, Lu Sheng impaled the zombie's left leg with a spear before employing the stellar body technique. As he absorbed the zombie's power, Lu Sheng discovered that it was a level 6 warrior, requiring all of his physical strength to handle. Despite the challenges, these fights proved invaluable for gaining combat experience and improving his vitality. This was a unique gift from the dream world, allowing him to enhance various martial arts techniques such as fist, palm, leg, spear, and sword. Reflecting on his progress, Lu Sheng acknowledged that it's rare for someone to excel in every aspect, but his situation was different. By absorbing the life experiences of the defeated zombies, he was accumulating over a century's worth of knowledge. Excited by the prospect of completing his martial arts journey, Lu Sheng was only concerned about his psychic power. Although it had saved him from the zombie, he realized its limitations against higher-ranking opponents. Deciding to focus on enhancing his psychic abilities, Lu Sheng diligently refined his mind, leading to a breakthrough that felt like a surge of electricity coursing through his body. He got curious to check his stats and commanding the Fire Seed program to show his progress. Lu Sheng, a male martial artist, who lived for 156 years. He achieved remarkable feats in his lifetime, starting as a second-level martial artist at the young age of 18, causing a stir in Baihe City. With the recommendation of the Baihe City Wushu Association, he excelled in the talent training camp of Dongning Province, securing the top position. He furthered his achievements by entering Dongning Wuhan University, ranking first in the city, province, and 53rd in the country. His martial arts prowess continued to grow, reaching the 6th-level warrior rank at the age of 40 and ascending to a 7th-level grandmaster at 65. In July 452 of Budo, he succumbed to an old injury at the age of 156. With the revelation of his 7th grade master status and level 3 authority, Lu Sheng's eyes sparkled with excitement. This new advancement marked a significant change in his future, propelling him into the realm of a 7th level grandmaster during his lifetime. With his newfound 3rd level authority, Lu Sheng was delighted and wasted no time in instructing the fire seed. He requested follow-up exercises for star body refining technique natural breathing method, and crystal conception thoughts. This time, he didn't face rejection due to insufficient permissions. Shortly after, three exercises were located and presented to Lu Sheng. Stellar Body Refining Technique, Advanced Chapter, crafted by Wang He, an 11th level powerhouse of the Vumeng, and included in the fire plan. Natural Breathing Method, Advanced, devised by Yang Yi Zhou, an 11th level powerhouse of the Martial Arts League, and integrated into the fire plan. Crystal Visualization Technique, Advanced Edition, created by Duan Yifeng, an 11th level powerhouse of the Vumeng League, and incorporated into the Fire Seed Plan. Additionally, Lu Sheng gained access to another exercise called Divine Illumination of the King of Hell, crafted by Duan Yifeng, an 11th level powerhouse of the Vumeng League, and also incorporated into the Fire Seed Plan. Lu Sheng's assessment of this exercise was nothing short of awe inspiring. Unlike typical combat skills, this technique was specifically tailored for psychic mentalists. Its core purpose was to construct another body within the warrior, a body entirely woven from spiritual power. This mental clone comprised muscle fibers, cells, and even genes, with the sole objective of amplifying the entire body. The first level of divine illumination focused on using mental power to strengthen organs and enhance vitality. While Lu Sheng had previously improved his combat power with other techniques, divine illumination promised to elevate his qi and blood values, thus boosting all his stats. Taking a deep breath, Lu Sheng attempted to calm the turmoil within his heart. I've underestimated the wisdom crystallized over 10,000 years in martial arts. Just thinking about creating such a cultivation method now is daunting, Lu Sheng mused, firmly holding onto the name Duan Yi Feng in his heart. The individual who could conceive both crystal conception and divine illumination deserved his utmost admiration. It's rare for a civilization to produce such a figure. Even among the 11th level powerhouses, Duan Yi Feng should be regarded as an absolute pinnacle, Lu Sheng reflected. Yet, even a powerhouse like him couldn't prevent the collapse of human civilization. With a silent nod, Lu Sheng switched off the optical brain and began practicing directly in the dream space. He had many tasks ahead and a long journey to traverse. Every minute and second counted, and none could afford to be wasted. One month passed, and Lu Sheng focused on mastering advanced techniques. He stayed in his room, only eating and training. He didn't care about training camps or special rooms like everyone else did. Meanwhile, Xia Lin trained in the psychic room, improving her skills with star cones. Dong Kuangshu was impressed by Xia Lin's progress controlling three star cones in just a month. 
she explained that mastering six star cones would elevate Xia Lin to rank one mentalist. Xia Lin was grateful for Dong Quangxu's guidance, but Dong Quangxu sensed Xia Lin's fear and worried it could hinder her growth. Xia Lin couldn't shake off the fear of Lu Sheng's demoniac eyes and asked Dong Quangxu for help. The solution seemed to be defeating or killing the one she feared to overcome her trauma. However, Xia Lin couldn't imagine beating Lu Sheng. Despite this, Dong Quangxu was confident in Xia Lin's abilities, considering her rapid growth. Xia Lin realized that Lu Sheng had been inactive for a month and believed she could defeat him now. As Dong Quangxu headed back to her room, she bumped into the deputy chief instructor. He asked about Xia Lin's progress. Dong Quangxu praised Xia Lin's skills but mentioned she still had a lot to learn. The deputy chief instructor worried Dong Quangxu might be too tough on Xia Lin, saying not everyone could be like the chief instructor. Dong Quangxu explained they had taught everything, and the training camp would end soon. She asked about Lu Sheng, but Qin Xiaojin gave disappointing news. Lu Sheng was just sleeping in his dorm all day, getting meals delivered. This annoyed Dong Quangxu because she had said students with enough points could rest, but Lu Sheng wasn't even trying. Dong Quangxu was disappointed, saying Lu Sheng wasn't even a challenge for the other talented students. She believed Xia Lin could easily beat Lu Sheng and Meng Jinha at the camp's closing ceremony. Yang Yuan gripped the mop tightly, battling the stubborn stains on the floor. Yang Yuan, still not done? Let me give you a hand. A girl entered, seeing Yang Yuan scrubbing away, so she joined in without hesitation. Thanks. Yang Yuan paused, wiping sweat from her brow, and smiled gratefully at the girl. What's up? Didn't you help me before? Let's finish this quickly, or we'll be up late tonight. The girl sighed and got to work. Yang Yuan nodded with a mix of emotions. It had been almost a month since she joined the training camp, and it had been tough. Everything required points, food, lodging, even better training conditions. They envied those who scored 100 points, skipping chores and getting better training. She asked Yang Yuan about Lu Sheng's whereabouts lately. He's been holed up in his room, not coming out much. You used to be close, right? Don't you know what's up? Yang Yuan's hand paused briefly, then resumed. I have no idea. The girl sighed, I guess you're out of the loop too. Lu Sheng's been unpredictable lately. His outburst a while back shook everyone in camp. It seemed promising, but then it fizzled out the next day. She dipped the mop in the bucket, shaking her head. It's been over a month now, and even those of us who don't get along have become resilient. There are many warriors who have reached the second level. Lu Sheng, on the other hand, stays secluded, perhaps because others have surpassed him in strength. Yang Yuan wondered if Lu Sheng was afraid, but she quickly dismissed the thought. She firmly stated that Lu Sheng wasn't that type of person and asked her companion to leave her alone to clean the area. Suddenly, they heard a commotion about Cao Yang from Yonglin City challenging the quadruple gravity chamber. The girl with Yang Yuan showed disdain and contempt on her face, but there was a hint of jealousy in her eyes. Yang Yuan was surprised by the news of the quadruple gravity challenge. She remembered struggling in the double gravity room for only 20 minutes last time and had to leave early. Yang Yuan was forced to check out Cao Yang challenging the chamber, but her mind was consumed with thoughts of Lu Sheng and what he might be doing. In a room with glass walls, a strong figure stood quietly. He was a young man of 18 or 19, with dark skin and an ordinary appearance. Yet, there was a hint of determination and ferocity in his expression. Despite his stillness, he seemed to be under immense pressure, his muscles trembling slightly. Sweat dripped down his body, soaking his clothes. After about four minutes, he ended the exercise and exited the room. A boy waiting outside handed him a dry white towel, which he accepted casually. As he wiped the sweat from his body, he asked, How long did I last this time? Three minutes and fifty-two seconds. The boy replied eagerly, admiration clear on his face. Cao Yong, from King Zhao, frowned. The boy beside him admired, Cao Yong, if you keep working this hard, you'll soon master the quadruple gravity. Who in the training camp will be able to challenge you then? A third level warrior? Cao Yong muttered, lost in thought. Once he snapped out of it, Cao Yong turned to the boy and asked, Do you know what Lu Shang has been up to lately? He's still in his room, sleeping and eating. No one has seen him train even once, the boy replied. Remembering his defeat against Lu Shang, Cao Yong grinned, determined to surpass him. He said, no matter how strong Lu Shang is, I'll surely surpass him with my recent progress. Even a turtle can surpass a rabbit if it sleeps. Feeling disappointed about Lu Shang's 1,000 points at the entrance ceremony, Cao Yong suddenly felt a rush of air as someone swiftly passed him into the gravity chamber, leaving him stunned. Commenting on Lu Shang, Cao Yong remarked, now all of a sudden he remembers to train after wasting a month of his time. Lu Shang, ignoring Cao Yong, focused on the gravity room charges and began his training. Curious to test his strength after a month of regression training in his dream world, Lu Shang was determined to improve. 
Lu Sheng walked to the center of the room and began with double the gravity, skipping warm-ups. He casually pressed the start button on the remote control in his hand. Damn, doesn't this guy need to warm up? One of the boys outside the gravity room blurted out when they saw Lu Sheng reaching for the start button. This guy has been out of the training camp for so long that he's lost even basic common sense, another boy remarked, shaking his head. The gravity training room is no joke. They're all serious fighters, and while muscles and bones may be able to handle sudden changes in external pressure, the delicate internal organs are another matter. Without warming up and following regulations, it's easy to rupture organs and cause bleeding. The boys agreed that Lu Sheng either didn't know or was too full of himself and might end up harming himself. Suddenly, the gravity alert sounded, and the boys stared at Lu Sheng in anticipation, ready for a show. However, they were shocked when Lu Sheng didn't respond. Just as one of the boys was about to express his thoughts, they saw Lu Sheng raise his hand and deliver a powerful punch. The fist moved too fast to be seen clearly, leaving everyone stunned. Was that the sound of fists breaking through the air? One of the boys exclaimed, astonished. Another added, seriously. Even I struggle to move in double gravity, and this guy's making it sound easy? At that moment, they observed Lu Sheng lower his fist, adjust the controls, and press a button. Double gravity barely affects me. It just feels like there's more weight on my body, making movements require more effort, Lu Sheng explained. With four times the gravity, the sensation is even stronger. At first, even breathing felt uncomfortable. But it's just a matter of getting used to it. Suddenly, a prompt announced the gravity change in the training room. Kao Yang glanced at the display screen outside the room, where clear words indicated that four times the gravity had been activated. Everyone was shocked, their expressions and movements synchronized as they turned to observe the scene. This time, Lu Sheng inside the room finally experienced the fourfold increase in gravity. His actions caught the attention of passers-by, including Xia Lin, who had just returned from her lesson. After observing the stunned expressions of everyone, Xia Lin looked through the one-way mirror of the gravity chamber and saw Lu Sheng performing a handstand on two fingers under four times gravity. Kao Yang couldn't believe Lu Sheng's strength, thinking it impossible to even consider defeating him. Lu Sheng pressed the plus button, increasing the gravity to five times its normal level. This caught the attention of the entire campus, with students rushing to the gravity room to witness the extraordinary event. Outside the training room, a crowd gathered, gasping in amazement as they saw the increased gravity. The small room's door was soon packed with people, while more continued to rush in from the entrances. The sudden increase in pressure weighed heavily on Lu Sheng, making his body feel as if it had plunged into a quagmire, becoming increasingly difficult to move. This pressure is intense Lu Sheng's eyes lit up, and he took a deep breath. Now, I can test my new abilities. Instantly, Lu Sheng's breathing changed. Five times the gravity? Lu Sheng set the gravity to five times its normal level. Oh my, I'd be crushed if I went in there. This is insane. Kao Yang, did you hear that? Kao Yang, momentarily stunned by the discussions, pretended not to hear and instead peered into the room. At that moment, Lu Sheng activated the natural breathing method, and went to the panel increasing the gravity even further. With this, the chapter concludes. Don't miss out on the next installment. Hit that subscribe button and join us for the continuation of Lu Sheng's remarkable story.